We'll be discussing our only overager in the first round today. We've got the, sp the prospect spotlight on Jesse Polkinen for today's episode of Locked On NHL Prospects. You are Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On this podcast, we break down everything prospects related, related for you five days a week, Monday to Friday. I'm Hattie Kalakesh, joined by Sebastian High, and on today's show, we'll be breaking down the game of Jesse Polkinen, um, how he plays, what his uh, profile is. We're talking about a six foot six, two 216-pound defenseman who went undrafted last year, but this year has been tearing it up. Uh, we'll be breaking down his his production in, uh, in Liga this year and in all all the finish leagues because he's played at all three levels um and we'll just overall kind of break down first and foremost the puck skills so it's uh his stick handling shooting passing abilities in our second segment we'll discuss a tool kit so how his tools interact and also we'll talk about um the overall um nhl projection in our third segment and break down which team would be the best fit for Jesse Polkinen. Again, this is a player who was not drafted last year, who was eligible last year. This is the second year of eligibility, and there has been a huge leap in his, his overall abilities and his tools, um, and also in his production overall. Uh, so we'll get into all that. Before we get into that, though, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment letting us know what you want us to talk about next. And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, make sure to make us your first listen of the day. So let's get this started right away. I think we can start with the production with Jesse Polkinen. Uh, we already discussed the size on him. That's the big asset. But, you know, talk me through the jump from last year to this year because it's a major one, right? For sure, it has been massive. Last year, he was uh, playing exclusively in the U20 league in Finland, and the production was not exactly that uh, that gets you drafted. Uh, yeah. in, in in 43 games, he only logged four single assists. He didn't get a single goal, and uh, he went undrafted, which is to be expected with that stat line typically. This year, it's been a very different story. He started out the season, of course, in the same league, uh, but he logged 11 goals and 28 points through just 18 games in that span, which was a significant leap from the four points in 43 games. So yeah. he very quickly made the next step up to Liga, and he's been a really consistent second-pairing defenseman uh, playing with uh, Yippie Veskala in Liga and uh, has logged two goals and eight points through 25 games and played a pretty significant role on Finland's uh, U20 team at the World Junior Championship in which he logged uh, a goal and three assists in seven games but was arguably one of the best defensemen in the entire tournament which is quite the feat com compared to where he was at like last season uh, yeah. in his level of play just a massive massive leap uh in in the, the results and also just how he's been approaching the game it's been vastly different from last season and he went from a player that n was on nobody's like radars really uh or tangibly for the draft and this yeah. season he is very solidly within our first rounds i believe he's within our top 20 on both of our personal boards and he ended up at 27th on our Dopper Prospects rankings. And uh, there was very little hesitation for us to rank a D plus one that highly, which is very rare. Yeah, absolutely. And we can get into the tools. I just want to break down the kind of the the, the trajectory. So he started off in J20, uh, was clearly, clearly too good for that league. If you watch his goals, um, he was just walking in unimpeded and just scoring consistently. Like he he's so hard to handle. Um, and we'll get into the tools to break down why that is. But Right after that, uh, his uh, his pro team, Yip and, and Liga, they decided that they were going to loan him out to the um, second division of Finnish hockey. He played six games there, logged four points. They're like, okay, that's enough. You're playing for us. And they, they recalled him from loan. He's been playing in Liga since. But yeah, to break down the puck skills, um, I want to start off with the, the stick handling because I think that's where he shines the most, right? This is a player who at six foot six, 216, should not be this comfortable with the puck, right? 
Not at all. And I, I remember specifically, I watched the last game that he played in Mestis before he got called back up to Liga. And it was a game in which he scored one goal. He had nine shots on goal and played 38 minutes. Uh, yep. And that was the game where where the handling skill is just absolutely like baffling me on every single shift. And he really jumped onto my radar big time. The handling ability has a real fluidity to it. Uh, he is six foot six. He's absolutely massive. But uh, he handles the puck as if he's like a five foot eight defenseman. Uh, he's he yep. makes really deft puck touches. Constantly puts the puck in a position where he is really protecting it with his body uh, and is getting it away from the opposition. Constantly playing uh, playing keep away with the puck and and always very very composed when he's being pressured. And that's one of the the big things in this game is the composure. It enables the handling ability to really shine, and he's able to get the absolute most out of it. Uh, he's he's very comfortable with the puck on his stick he will routinely try to skate the puck up himself he doesn't see a lane he will just circle back and try it again and he's also a pretty solid passer in transition with a a nice dual threat uh with the puck on his stick but the handling ability on on our grading scale would be at least a 6.5 it is a significant asset and uh I've been a massive fan of it through like throughout this season and it's just gotten better and better with every single viewing for sure uh we can move on to the shot i think the shot is decent as well um he doesn't really utilize his slapper as much he's not really kind of the type of player who's going to one time the puck from the from the point he's more of the walk in and shoot um off the wrister type of player and i like his in stride wrister he's got a lot of weight on it um it's decently accurate as well I, i feel like sometimes his toggle for when to shoot and when not to shoot isn't on point but it's something that i feel usually gets worked out um with players that play this this frequently at such a high level already it's just a matter of time before he figures that part out i mean he's already facing pros and he's able to score some goals you know get involved on the score sheet so you know the shot in terms of power accuracy weight transfers um his ability to to release it in movement i think is decent enough i'd give it a five and a half six uh definitely not on the level of his stick handling ability but definitely up there um and talk me through the passing because i i've had vision i've had uh views of him where i I see the passing as a benefit as a bona fide plus, but there's other viewings where it's kind of inconsistent. So talk me through your read of it. Yeah, like I think that the the pass accuracy is typically quite good. He sometimes gets a little bit overconfident with the puck on his stick and can try to do a little bit too much. There's definitely still yep. a bit of a risk assessment gauge that is being calibrated with Polkinen, and uh, he's he's really learning to trust his tools this season. It's one of the big reasons that he's been popping off so much. But with that has also come uh, mistakes, and and he's he's like sometimes overestimating what he can do in a certain situation or underestimating the pressure that he's under. That said, when he puts himself in a position where he's not being like pressured in th- by th- from three different directions, uh, in in those cases, he's typically a fairly strong passer. But I would say that at the passing is the most inconsistent of his three puck skills uh, in my viewings. Um, but the mechanics of the passing are quite good. It is more than anything not the decision making necessarily of the passes themselves, but the decision making leading up to when he's when he wants to pass and perhaps waiting a bit too long before pulling the trigger on a pass uh, and, and getting into a situation where there aren't many outlets anymore. But uh, that has been like getting better and better as the season's progressed. Uh, but there's definitely still like a raw nature to his decision making and and his, his on puck risk assessment. Yeah, for sure. That's definitely a part of his game that he it can improve, but you know the foundations are there. He's able to hit those seams. He's able to to make plays, play give and go at times. Um, but you still see the 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 hints of a player who's just starting off his pro career and last year was playing full time in junior. Uh, you, can, you can still see the hints of it, but I feel like it's progressed decently over the past month. Um, but that wraps it up for our first segment. We'll get into our second segment where we talk about the toolkit and the habits with Jesse Pulkinen. We'll break that down after these messages from our sponsors over at Factor. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-created, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every single week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto options. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons uh, to help you stay fueled and feeling good all day long. 
What are you waiting for? Get started and get after your goals. Factor meals are so quick and easy to make, and they have so many options. Whether you're into pancakes or smoothies, breakfast or dessert, uh, lunch or dinner, the choice is yours with Factor. Head over to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and use code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com for to get 50% off. Alrighty, so moving on to our second segment, we'll be talking about Yesi Polkanen's habits and toolkit overall. Um, so how his tools inter- interact and how his habits uh, either uplift or impede his game. Um, I think we'll just start with the toolkit. I think that Yesi Polkanen's ability to cover ice with his skating is amazing. Um, he's got a fluid uh, stride. He's got great edge work. Uh, he's able to um, kind of also kind of pace himself. He's not necessarily trying to speed up the pace of play at all times. He's comfortable kind of slowing down, stopping stopping a bit, or accelerating into pockets, slowing down to kind of ease into spots instead of kind of rushing into them, which I really like about his game. And it makes him a really good um, rush offense facilitator, right? For sure. Like, like the skating ability is just like the biggest plus and the way he's able to use it to elevate the rest of his toolkit is a massive strength. Like he's constantly using his feet to open up space for himself and for his teammates. He uses his, his uh, like, like strong base to protect the, the puck uh, when he has possession. And he's also, he's, he's very agile in terms of the lateral mobility and he's agile in all four directions and he's constantly using lateral shifts when he's rushing the puck up the ice and the same can be said when he's defending the rush for instance he's really good at not showing when he wants to close his gap and then the second he makes his decision makes like two or three quick strides uh, to the side to close that gap aggressively and leaves very little time for uh, the opposing forward to make a decision and to, to problem solve in those situations. But yeah, like like the skating ability, especially for a player at this size is a massive plus. It is above average, uh, like well above average, like even when you don't consider the size and with the size considered, it is again, unicorn like, like we've said this like twice this week now. And uh, I think we're, we've covered about the two unicorns that we're going to have in this draft class uh, in yeah. this week's prospect spotlights with Anton Salaev and and Yesse Polkinen, but it really is quite unique how he's able to leverage his skating ability. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any prospects I can name you other than Salaev that combine that size and skating so well. Um, the mobility with, with uh, Polkinen is a definite plus. I think on, on the habits side, uh, one thing that I think we've both identified and as a as a thing he needs to work on is you mentioned the risk assessment. Um, Polkinen at its core is a chaotic player. Like he, he's just, the way that he approaches the game is, is, is very, very chaotic. And it's fun to watch. It's entertaining. Um, but I can I can see some of his, of his decisions be decisions that make his coach invest in role game. Like it's 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 a problem at times. Um, but I, I, I you know it's especially clear when he's defending the rush, he can get really really aggressive. And with his ability to skate, if he makes a mistake, he's able to cover that gap back again. He's able to get back to make defensive plays and um, kind of correct his 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 over, he can correct his overcorrections if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like that also shows up in his offensive game. You mentioned his um, his tendency to kind of take players on instead of identifying his passing lanes, that kind of stuff. Uh, I think that's a, a kind of clearer manifestation of the chaotic elements of his game, right? For sure. Like, the one interesting thing with Pokemon in this season is that, like, if I had to sum him up in, like, two words, it would be composed chaos, which is yeah. not two words that you typically combine <laughs> in prospect assessments and, and evaluations. But yeah. with Polkinen, unlike Anton Salaev, he has a really high panic threshold. He rarely panics. When he makes a mistake, he just very he's very composed and tries to like make the play to to, to correct the mistake and then tries again. Like it's it's very much like a repetitive process. And yeah. um and yeah, like it's it's also one of the reasons that he gets himself into those situations where he is like outnumbered three to one and he has very little room to maneuver because he's very confident in his toolkit and also doesn't panic when he is in those situations. But uh yeah, it, it's 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 a fascinating style of play when you combine those two aspects. And the composure is certainly one of the big reasons that 
allows me to be quite optimistic with a product with the projection despite the level of chaos and there always will be an element of chaos and yes at Pokemon's game he's never going to outgrow it it is really intrinsic to how he approaches the game of hockey but it's, it's a type it's a type of chaos that could really really like create some advantages at the nhl level in the right situation like he would need to have the right type of defensive partner uh it would have to be a defensive partner that you really trust to be able to mop up some mistakes on the back end but if you're able to give yesi poken in some freedom the the benefits way outweigh the costs in my view yeah, I think the main thing with Polkanen is you want to get him in a system that, you know, he's not playing, he's he's not developing under a development system that is trying to out, to, to kind of ease out to the chaos from his game. It's actually what makes him so interesting. Uh, you know, he, sure. he's he's able to push the pace. He's confident with his stick handling ability. He's constantly threatening the middle. You know, you don't want to coach these things out. These are actual elements of his game that can be developed into something truly unique at the NHL level. Um, not a lot of defensemen with his level of size play with the confidence and composure on the puck that he has. Um, and you, you're going to want him to keep making mistakes. I don't I don't think the, the best idea is to try to rein him in or try to try to limit the chaos in his game. You, you need that sprinkled in there to keep things interesting for, for Polkinen and to keep him engaged in the game. I feel like the games where he tries to tone it down are the games that I've enjoyed the least um, in terms of his overall yeah. skill set because <laughs> he's not necessarily he's not necessarily trying things and, and exploring areas of his game when he's trying to just sit back and be a defensive defenseman. He can play that role, but I feel like if you try to make Jesse Polkin in a defensive defenseman, you're, you're probably going to get like a, a number four to number six defenseman out of him. Whereas if you try to develop the chaotic elements of his game into, into more regular, um, you know, offensive engagement into, into more regular activation from, from the neutral zone, um, you know, pushing down the boards, trying to make plays, uh, near the dots, that kind of stuff. I feel like that's where you get the most upside out of Polkin. Um, do you agree with that assessment? I fully agree, though I will add that I still do see a decent amount of like raw defensive upside with Polkinen. Yeah. I, I fully agree that it, it, it is at its best when it is contextualized with that high octane offense as well. Like having those two combined is what makes him so unique and so special. But the defensive game is quite solid. He has an octopus like quality in his approach to defending the rush. He has a massive reach and he really uses it. He's a bit of a shepherd uh, in defending the rush, tries to really shepherd the play towards the boards and when it's once it's there he really does use his physicality quite intelligently to smother out play he is obviously yeah. massive and he knows how to use that size to uh like smother out those plays and he obviously learned that as well like last season when he was playing those 43 games where he only logged four points in u20 hockey he had to bring something else to the table. He wasn't he wasn't the dynamic offensive presence on his team at that point. And instead, yeah. he was the big physical defensive defenseman type of player. But this season, sure, you, we're layering in a ton of offensive dynamism and creativity and confidence, which is beautiful to see. But that foundation yeah. of defensive solidity and intelligence and effectiveness is still really key to his NHL projection in my eyes. Fully, yeah, absolutely. I also think of that that's that's what kind of allows him to explore his offensive side because yeah. you know he's he's most of the time the puck touches he's getting heading up the ice are of his own doing like he's the one turning up turning over the puck he's the one lifting his stick uh smothering a player along the boards getting off the boards and getting a puck touch in in the neutral zone like that's a lot of the plays that he gets uh, a lot of the touches he gets offensively actually start with his own defensive plays which i think is a really projectable thing uh but that wraps things up for our second segment we'll talk about the nhl projection with the sa Polkin and what we expect him to be how many points we expect him to get what's his floor what's his ceiling and which team would be the best fit after these messages from our sponsors at Indeed. No matter how the last game went, any time you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're looking at hire, Indeed is the best place to get it done uh, because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites looking to for the best candidates with the right skills, uh, you just need 
one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. And Indeed is exactly that. They partner you, they partner with you on every step of the hiring process. They help you find great talent through the time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessment and virtual interviews. Instant Match really stands out to me because basically as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates and you can reach out to them and um, ask them to um, and invite them to apply to your position. Um, and those those um, those candidates, usually their skill sets match exactly what you're looking for. Um, it's also really useful as an employee. Um, you know, I got my job through Indeed. And uh, what made it really interesting is how user friendly it is. Um, you know, everything's clear. The, the the platform is really easy to use. But on top of that, there's no surprises. You know what the salary is. You know what the expectations of the job are. There's great descriptions that explain exactly what you need. Um, so it's, it's a great tool for both employers and employees. Uh, so you can join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. This offer is valid through March 31st. Just go to Indeed indeed.com slash locked on to claim that $75 credit before March 1st. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. All righty. So moving on to our final segment regarding Jesse Polkinen. Um, the, you know, I've called him the 2024 NHL drafts unicorn. I see him as more unique than Salayev. Uh, and I put out a video on my personal YouTube channel kind of breaking down his game uh, and, and detailing that if you want to check it out. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the projection because I'm still kind of, uh, it's it's hard to say. It's hard to say with Pulkin. Uh, part of me really sees the number two, number three potential. I don't think there's a chance he becomes a top pair defenseman. But I think that, do you see him as a potential number one defenseman? Do you see that as part of his, his potential, part of his upside? maybe I think it's really <laughs> tough to determine at this stage just because his trajectory went from flatlining so to weird. absolutely spiking kind of guessing yeah. where exactly that's going to end up at its highest point is still a little bit of a mystery like there are some tools that if you saw in a first time draft eligible as they're currently being displayed by Polkinen, then yes number one defenseman upside w- would be in the conversation but he, again, is such a unicorn. He's so unique. It, it adds a ton of, of question marks to that projection. But I think number two is where I'd feel comfortable at the moment. I think the level of chaos uh, does make me a little bit hesitant to to really like like bang the table for number one upside. And I think if, if I saw number one upside, I'd be, I, I would be making arguments for him in the top 15 of our draft board at Dauber Prospects, which I haven't done just yet. But we still have a, a little bit of time left this season uh, to, to kind of... Um, simmer on that projection but i think num- number two upside would be my my safe optimistic level at this point i could see that for sure um i also see the floor is fairly high i don't think there's any circumstance where yesip Elkinen doesn't make the nhl in some capacity um yeah. it would take a lot to go wrong you know uh if you look at the tools and how they interact right now like a six foot six 216 pound left-handed defenseman who skates like he does uh who covers ice like he does who plays defensively and physically the way that he does um both off the rush and in his own zone that alone is a great foundation of tools that can get you to the nhl on its own yet on top of that the comfort he has on the puck the composure the puck skills there's a lot here and i think that polkin is for sure an nhler at least for me a number five defenseman like if he makes the nhl it's gonna if he makes the nhl in his worst capacity he's probably gonna be the better player of um, a pair on the bottom six uh on the bottom pair you know on defense like i'd be very surprised if he ends up as anything worse than that um in terms of production though um what do you see as it's a kind of realistic um, idea of Polkin. And let's say he hits the middle end of his production. Like what's uh, the middle end of his upside? What's the production level? What, what does it look like in the NHL? Let's say that that's a second pairing and a second power play QB role then, right? Like I think that would yeah. be the, the the middle range of, of that projection. Uh, we're yeah. still optimistic, but it's fairly realistic as well. Uh, 
I, I would see like 45 point upside in that type of situation for Polkinen. I think a lot of it depends on how he's going to be developed uh, because he has really only come into this, this particular style of play this season. It is still quite new. There's still a lot of malleability with how he's going to be developed and whichever team drafts him will have a lot of power over determining what type of player he ends up being at the NHL level. But I, I could I could see some some pretty interesting production. I, I don't think he's going to be the type of defenseman that just takes over shifts on on a regular basis and just like like dictates play in like a, a, Q, a Quinn Hughes esque fashion. Like it, it's it's not going to be that dominant. But I do see like like with the level of tools and the creativity and the quick processing, the quick problem solving ability. I really do see like 40 plus point upside in the right situation. Like, yes, he would have, he would have to be in a fairly offensive role. He'd have to be a little bit insulated at even strength uh, with his, with his pairing mate to hit that on a second pairing in second pairing minutes. But I think that's, that's within the realm of possibility, but we are talking upside here. Like, I think it's, 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 it'd be more realistic to say like 35 ish point upside. Yeah, I could see that as well. Um, I'm also wondering, you know, what's a realistic expectation for him? You know, in which range can we realistically expect him to go in the draft? Um, you know, we have him in our top 20s, respectively. He ended up at 27th on our Dauber Prospects board. If you look at some of the other rankings, elite prospects are probably the highest on him from what I see here, 23rd. Um, but then on the TSN side, there's a big discrepancy. Craig Button has him 64th. Bob McKenzie has him 33rd. Um, Bob McKenzie's rankings consistently are the most reflective of what happens on draft day. Do you expect him to be, you know, an early second round pick at the most a late first? Or do you think a team would look at him and see a, a bona fide top 20 pick? I, I wouldn't be shocked to see him picked as early as like 18th overall. I think that would be about, about the ceiling. Uh, I think that it's around the range where Yigor Chinnikov went as well a couple seasons ago. Uh, like we do have some relatively yep. recent precedent for uh, a, a D plus one who is just like popping off. And while Chinnikov was a, certainly a yep. reach on draft day, it was quite a shocking selection. And with Polkanen, it wouldn't be. I think mm -hmm. that would be kind of the range where you start seeing teams considering looking in his direction as a D plus one. And he's, a, he's not just a D plus one. Like he, he's also like a, a December birthday. Uh, so he's a bit older for his draft class as well. Like, like there's a decent age gap there, certainly. But he's already ranked 33rd overall on Bob McKenzie's board. And, and he's only going to be rising up uh, from that point in, in, with my expectations. So I, I my expectation yeah. is that he ends up going around the 23 to 25 range, but anywhere in the first round is possible. I'd be a bit surprised if he, if he fell to the second though, like with his profile, with, with his world junior championship performances, uh, I, I think that there's a really, really strong, uh, like chance that he ends up being a first round uh, pick at the end of the day here. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised either. Um, what's really interesting for me with Polkanen is just he fits exactly what a lot of teams are looking for, right? Like this is a player who a lot of teams will be looking at and being like, okay, well, this is exactly what we need. Um, so I think that it's, it's it's a matter of team need as well. Um, a lot of teams are looking for these big mobile defensemen and they usually go a lot higher than they than they could or that they should sometimes. Uh, but with Polkanen, I feel like he's one of the, one of the ones where I'm the most confident in the projection um, in, in terms of his overall ability to help a team. You know, like Anton Salaev, I feel, is probably going to go in the top three. I don't know if that's warranted. Jesse Polkanen is likely to go in the kind of 25 to 35 range. I think that's even lower than he should be. You know, so it's, it's, he's one of the only ones in this kind of mold and this kind of profile that I think... Um, the, the the hype is warranted and you know the the ability to draft him higher than he could realistically go um it is worth it uh but to end things off what's the best fit for him in the nhl like wh which team do you see which team do you see swinging on him and which team do you see having the best um having the best outcome getting the most out of Polkanen? I don't think I'm answering either question, but I'm saying the team that I want him to end up, and that's the Edmonton Oilers, just for chaos sake. Like, I, I want to oh, see wow. Jesse Polkinen yeah. with Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl on a nightly basis, and I, I will tune into like, every Edmonton Oilers game uh, in that situation. Are the Oilers necessarily the organization that is likely going to get the most out of Polkinen? As an organization, I don't know. With the lineup, possibly. 
but it would be a really fun one. And and I mean, Edmonton's picking like that, that, that mid twenties range. So they're certainly within that range, of course, unless they go on a massive playoff run. Um, and I, I would, I would just, I'd love to see Pulkin in, in that situation. Now I, I don't, really expect kenny holland to go out and pick a d plus one on draft day especially a european d plus one i think that that might be a little bit far far fetched but hey if it's going to be anyone it's going to be the six foot six unicorn um but which team which team will actually benefit his development trajectory and it isn't just a a fun projection here oh i want to say the leafs uh um the toronto uh development system is great and that that would just not be fair. It wouldn't be fair to have um uh, Yusuf Polkin and you know quarterbacking a power play that has Matthews and Marner and Neiland. Like that's just not. It's it's almost scary. Um, I also have one last question to end things off. Uh, we haven't asked this before, but who do you think is would be the best NHL D partner for Yusuf Polkin? David Savard. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> um, the best NHL D partner. That's a tough qu- I mean, like, I think if we're looking historically, like, Shea Weber would have been, like, the ideal one where you have a mix of offensive intelligence, offensive toolkit, but real, real defensive solidity uh, and a player that would be a really stabilizing force on that pairing. I think Polkinen would really thrive in a situation uh, in which he's playing with a with, with a player who not only, like, commands respect uh, off the ice, but on the ice as well, and and really is just able to to shut down like odd man rushes because they're going to occur with Pulkin in like that's inevitable and how often remains a question mark and and, and his development could could make that a, a lot less frequent with time but I think that like a, a a really consistent like defensive oriented defense and like maybe Chris Tanev if we're looking at like current NHLers like Dallas would be another pretty good fit like if if Tanev reups in Dallas. I think that that would be a really, really nice uh, place for Polkin to slot in, but it's not like not like uh, Polkin is necessarily going to be in the NHL by next season either. But uh, I think that mold of defenseman yeah, would be something yeah. that that Polkin can really work with, like defensive defenseman who also like excels in terms of like breakup passes specifically and allows Polkin to activate uh, from from the defensive zone onwards and just really man that that transition and the breakout. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but that wraps things up for today's show. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment letting us know what you want us to talk about next. And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, make sure to make us your first listen of the day. For your second listen of the day, make sure to check out Locked On Sports Today. They've got all your news and updates about what's going on around uh, around the sporting world. And make sure to tune in for the rest of our shows for the month of March. This has been Hattie Kalakesh with Sebastian High, and we hope you tune in next time.